Hello! Let's learn how to use Buffalo to build a web application. What is Buffalo? Buffalo is written in Go. It is meant to generate code, run development services, and package a production binary all by itself. Let's take a look. This is the main project page for Buffalo. Each of the individual tools that make up the Buffalo toolbox are also on GitHub. This page lists out some of the other libraries that are used by Buffalo packages. We can see Gorilla Mux is used as a router. That should be familiar to most folks building web applications in Go. On the front end, by default, we also get Bootstrap, jQuery, and Webpack to bundle all those assets for the application. This installation page will walk you through getting Buffalo set up on your machine, depending on your OS. On my machine, I'm running Linux, a Debian distribution. I have Buffalo installed. We can type Buffalo version. We type Buffalo all by itself. You can see the rest of the help screen here. Okay, so what could be our first step? Buffalo new uh, and type a project name. Let's see what happens. So we can see Buffalo is installing all the dependencies for our project. A lot of node packages at this step. Um, we navigate into my project. We can look at the files generated in this code editor. Okay, so what do we see? We see a lot of files here. Um, one thing we see right away is GoMod is uh, telling me there's some problem here. So what could we do? Just to kind of clean up our dependencies for any Go project, Go Mod Tidy. Okay, looks like a couple things are satisfied. Downloaded, all good to go. Uh, what else do we see here? There is a README. Uh, this will give you some more information about what to do. Uh, there's mention of a database. Uh, we have the .env file. Uh, that'll come in handy. Um, realize Buffalo is a MVC type of framework, model view controller. You may have seen this with Rails, uh, Angular, uh, other frameworks use this pattern as well. Uh, in Buffalo we have models, so that would satisfy the M models part. Uh, the view is handled here in templates. Uh, we can see we're using a plush templating system. And the C, the controller, is actually in Buffalo Linguo called actions. So all of our actions um, are going to be our controllers. And app.go is as you can see with the text here, is the main file that defines our routes and middleware. Okay, so let's see what happens if we just try to run Buffalo, Buffalo Dev. This is going to start a dev server. You can see Webpack is starting. Some red text, exit status, something failed. What is that? Okay, port 3000, address already in use. Okay, on my machine, I already have something running on port 3000. That's the default port that Buffalo uses for the dev server. How do we get around this? Our .env file is where we can just define global variables. See if that works. Try Buffalo dev again. Okay, I don't see any red text. Uh, the line I'm looking for is this one right here. Starting application at port 3045. Let's open it up and see what we get. Uh-oh, another error, but we do have a page. Couldn't start a transaction. Failed to connect to something database. Okay. Uh, how do we get around this one? If you go back up to our app.go, this is really the main entry point. We see TLS at some point, parameter logger, CSERF protection, and pop models database. Okay, wraps each request in a transaction, pop connection. So pop is the library that is used to manage ORM. Uh, what happens if we just disable this for now? Okay, we can see we've got a page. All right, so that worked. So we just kind of eliminated our database concerns for the moment. We can come back to that. But we do have a page. Uh, and this is the defined routes table. So we only have one route by default. We have that root route. Um, what does it look like to add routes? Just type anything. So what path do we want to define a route for? A slash about. And we can create a handler. So. Home handler is already defined. Where does that live? Okay, that's here in home. Okay, so if we wanted to create an about handler, we can just kind of copy paste here. So we'll go to an about page. Okay, so that would mean we're going to need 
a page here instead of index if we just create about and these have the extension plush.html because again we are using the plush templating system do something real simple um, and just static content here on this page now what happens okay by default uh, the Buffalo dev server is running in the background it registered that new route there it is you can navigate to that page okay great uh, what if we wanted to pass some information to that template and not just have static pages how would we do that enter the Buffalo context so Buffalo context is something really important um, to satisfy the life cycle of any request that we get on our routes. Um, as we saw over here, the pop middleware is going to add a database transaction and it does that through the context. So when we get that database connection, we will get it through context later. Uh, there's other things that we can add to context or read from context um, that is available throughout the middleware um, and all the handlers that would be that would run on any given route. So in this case, we can do something as simple as, so we're going to set a new property on context. The key is title, the value is the about page. Okay, so how do we use that in our template? Instead of hard coding that, we use this plush syntax, which will print out the value that we set. Okay, let's add one more. Okay, so that worked. If we go over here real quickly, how does Plush work? If you want to understand more about that, you can go to the, the GitHub repo for Plush. There's some good documentation here about how it works. Um, another thing to realize is that um, looking at what is included by default, we do get Bootstrap. Um, so let's see what we can use here. And you can see it's uh, it doesn't show up real well. That is a little bit of a dark uh, light gray. That's the Bootstrap Jumbotron. Um, all of the Bootstrap library, I think it's Bootstrap version 4, are available to us here. So that's a quick demo of how to add routes and add some static content. Uh, what if we wanted to do some dynamic content with uh, our handlers? Um, so instead of, let's define a new route. A simple one might be... Uh, a page for users where we pass in a user ID and that is passed off to the handler so let's define user handler um, if you've used any routing system before you made this may be familiar to you any parameters you define go in curly braces and that value user ID is going to be available in the handler so let's okay so instead of setting that uh, we need to get the user ID so again, context to the rescue. So if we hover over c.param, uh, we can see what it's doing. It expects a string, so we pass it a string, and we get a string back. So Buffalo context is going to look for whatever value we pass it, and if it finds it, it'll give it back. If not, it'll probably give us an empty string. That's a fair assumption, right? And we, would, we could check for that empty string if we need it in our our handlers here. Okay, so now we have user ID. What can we do with it? Um, we could set the contact context and pass it off to the template here. So we create a new template. Okay, so now we'll go back. Okay, now we see that Buffalo has registered this new route. And we type it in. Okay, so we are passing that context from the URL straight to the controller, and that renders out on our page as we have it. Okay, so we have dynamic routes, but our data is still pretty static. How could we actually get some dynamic data in this route? To show that, we can make an API request to something. Um, in this case, let's use just something for testing purposes. This site allows us to hit endpoints uh, and get some data back. We can try this. So over here you can see um, now we have built out just a basic struct, a user. We have this payload struct up here which is really just used to get the JSON out of this system here. 
and we have a function down here that really just wraps up that HTTP request. So what are we going to do? We're going to send our user ID into it and expect a user and an error out of it. So how would we modify our user handler at this point to make an actual HTTP request and get some data? Okay, so we have user ID. Now what we want to do is actually pass it off to this function that wraps up that API request. And in this case, what would we do if we had an error? Um, one option would be to simply redirect users back to safety if something failed. And we can just leave that in place. So again, the context is what is actually doing that. The context takes care of rendering, redirects, does a lot for us. Okay, if we don't get an error, we can pass user to the context like this. Okay. We'll take a look at this template. You can see I've changed the template a little bit to expect the values that we would pass from user, that user struct now. Let's see if this works. Okay, so it does. So we're getting data back from an API request and it is rendered out here. Okay, what if we wanted to test that error case here? So I've modified this function to return an error no matter what. Uh, so we can test whether our redirect is going to work. Go back to our page, we'll change uh, the ID. Oh, there we go. Okay, so instead of giving us user ID 3, it sent us back to the home page. Seems to work, but maybe something more helpful would be to show some information to our users. How do we do that? We use context. Context has a flash method, which is going to pass flash messages off to the templates. And as long as the templates are set up right, it'll show that flash. How does that work? By default, we do get this partial template flash here. So we can see how that's working. In this case, what could we say? Too few arguments in call to flash. So flash expects a key and a value. Uh, the key is really ar is arbitrary. Um, you could say warning. But if we look at the flash template, we can see what is the key actually being used for? So K is going to go in here, alert hyphen key. So what does that come from? If we're using Bootstrap, these flash messages will show with the proper formatting. So we can see some of the keys that we could use, primary, secondary, success, danger, warning. So if we go back, we're passing a warning. Uh, Bootstrap will know how to render that. You could modify your system to read those keys and have CSS classes or anything else set up to do that. So let's try again. Okay, user 2. Okay, so we still get the redirect to the home page, but now we do have this flash message. Okay, everything's working there. So the last step is to fix our API request so that it doesn't return an error anymore. We can test that real quickly. So what else can we do? Remember, Buffalo is the Buffalo CLI will help generate code, run the development server, and package up a production binary. Let's try that. How do we do it? Buffalo build is the command we'll need here. Okay, so what happened? Uh, not obvious at first glance, but if we look up here, we do have this directory called bin, and we do have a new file in there, and that is probably going to be our binary, right? So if we change directory into bin and run it, what do we get? Okay, we see the same problem we had before where the port is already in use. So, and try it again. Okay, so it looks like we have success. Our production build is, seems to be working. Yep, and we're even able to make an HTTP request. So those are the first steps to building web application with Buffalo. We touched on the V and the C part of the MVC. We'll look at models in another video. But this should get you up and running with Buffalo. Thanks.